Alright guys, so we're back for part 3 of the power building series. To recap real quick, so far what we've talked about is when you're starting to incorporate hypertrophy work into your program, it can be a little complicated because strength is still a priority and all that hypertrophy work is going to eat into your recovery. And you have to really take that into account when you're making this program. Now the best way to really go about that, or the easiest way at least, is by adding volume to, to the body parts that you need to bring up. And we measure how much volume by chasing after that pump. Because uh, that gives us a pretty good idea. It's not perfect, but it's more or less a close measure of how much volume we want to add for a particular body part. That's where we've got so far. Today we're going to talk about how, okay, so you know I need to add volume and I know more or less how much volume I need. How do I actually work that into the program that we developed in part one of Unfucking Your Program, that, that whole series that we went through. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Again, a little bit tricky, but we're going to take it slowly. The first thing you want to think about is maximizing overlap in your program. This is pretty intuitive, but we just want to explain it so you guys are all on the same page. Let's say we're taking the standard power building split, the same one we talked about in part one. We got bench, squat, bench, deadlift, and maybe one of these days is a light bench day. Now, if I think that, okay, my triceps are lagging, I need to add tricep work, obviously I'm gonna add that to my bench day, not my squat day, because I'm already training my, bench, my triceps twice a week while I'm benching, and I wanna maximize the recovery time that I have for those triceps. If I put my triceps on squat day, well, then I'm benching, then I'm training triceps again, and then when I go back to bench on my third day, I'm probably going to be a little bit tired, and it's not going to be ideal. That's a pretty simple and straightforward example, but let's take some other body parts. Let's take some lats, for example. When you see a lot of traditional powerlifting programs, you'll see lats thrown in on upper body day, right, with bench. I think that's pretty much the, the traditional way of doing things. I actually really disagree with that, because if you're using correct form, you should be using your lats a lot in the deadlift as well. And so if I train my lats real hard on the second bench day and then I go to pull the day after that, I'm probably going to be feeling a little bit off. Maybe I can't keep my lats in the right position, or maybe I feel a little bit weak off the floor at a lockout when my lats should be helping a little bit and they're just too fatigued to be able to do that. Maybe they're even so fatigued that I can't stay in the right position and it really throws my deadlift off. I think the reason you don't see that a lot in traditional programs is because when you go back and look at a lot of traditional programs, they're based on lifters from the 80s and the 90s who are training using supportive equipment. And there, where you have the, the squat or the deadlift suit that can help you off the floor a little bit, the lats aren't quite as important. And the lats are super important in the bench press where you need to be able to pull the bar down to counteract that shirt. But for raw lifters, which I'm assuming most of y'all are, I, I would really put my lats with my deadlift if at all possible. Now, even taking that into account, you're still going to have to make some trade-offs. And this is really what I was getting at when I was saying how complicated it is to incorporate hypertrophy work into your strength training program. Because you're, you're going to find that it's not possible to totally avoid overlap, assuming that you have more than one or two muscle groups that you really need to bring up. And when it comes, when you find a scenario, find yourself in a scenario where you have to make trade-offs, I highly, highly recommend that you always emphasize movements over muscles. What I mean by that is, let's say your quads are lagging. I really think that you need to structure your program so that you have the most recovery time possible for your squat, not for whatever quad hypertrophy exercises you're incorporating. There's two reasons for that. The first is that this is all in the context of power building, and so we're still really, really focusing on strength as one of, if not the main priority. And because of that, we want to put the emphasis on our strength movements. The second reason is that for the vast majority of people, the vast majority of people, exercises, strength exercises like the squat, bench press, and deadlift are going to do more for your overall size than any isolation exercise you can think of. I don't care how many sets of leg extensions, even hack squats or leg press you do, you're probably not going to see as much benefit from those exercises as you will from heavy squats. It's not always the case, but more often than not it is. And for that reason, I think it's really, really important that you emphasize those movements over the muscles. There's one more point I want to talk about, and that's emphasizing weaknesses. When you come to the point where you have to make trade-offs, you're going to have to think about, okay, so how much, how much do I really want to give up in order to be able to incorporate this hypertrophy work into my program? Am I going to want to add that fifth training day so I can really just focus on my arms, or is that going to be doing too much and then I'm not going to be able to recover from my next bench day? When you're thinking about these trade-offs, you should emphasize your weaknesses over everything else. And so, hey, if you have really 
toothpick arms and you think your arms are so small that you're struggling to support the bench press and even with light weights your arms are shaking, then yeah, that adding that extra arm day is probably valuable. But if that's not the case and your bench press is really lagging and you're thinking, well, maybe if I get my triceps up a little bit it'll help, it probably won't help. Uh, so you really want to prioritize your weaknesses and figure out, be honest with yourself and say, look, what are my biggest weaknesses? How can I um, address them most directly? And if you go back to the very first part of the, the Unfix series, you'll, you'll have a better idea of how to do that. There's, there's actually two parts to emphasizing your weaknesses. The first is choosing which, to, which exercises, which body parts, which movements to focus on. The second is, okay, so let's say you've identified a weakness. Let's say it's triceps. Within the context of your tricep training, you still want to emphasize those weaknesses. So let's say that my triceps are lagging and I really think it's the lateral head that's lagging, not the long head, right? I really think that they don't quite have that pop even though they're, they're pretty big. So that's something to think about when you're doing exercises. In that case, I would really want to have more exercises with my elbows flared than with my elbows over my head. I also would really want to emphasize movements that give me a mind-muscle connection so that I can identi not identify but address that weakness more easily. We talked about this in the last part, right? Where you have that mind-muscle connection, you're able to activate a muscle in a certain movement, you're able to use that muscle better on all the other movements. And so you want to put those earlier on in your program, you want to prioritize them so you have more energy, more focus for those movements that are going to help make you better at everything else. So, when you're putting this all together, the way I recommend is that you start out with whatever strength program you have without any hypertrophy aspects, right? It's whatever program that we came up with from the whole part one of Unfuck Your Program, that whole series, you have a pure strength-based program. Identify one weakness that you want to focus on, one, and identify Ideally one, maybe two or three exercises that you're going to use to bring up that weakness. We're talking strictly about muscular weaknesses here, right? Again, we're in the context of power building. Add that one group, right, so one muscle group, maybe it's two or three exercises, add that to your training program. Just the one. Do not say that, okay, well, you know, my arms and my quads are weak, so I'm going to try and do both. We're making small changes, we're changing one thing at a time because you really have to identify how this is going to affect your program. I know this is, let's say it over and over again, and that's because it's really, really important. If I add both a quad day and an arm day to my program, and I end up sucking and I can't progress on my deadlift or something, yeah, it's probably because the quad exercises, but hey, maybe it's just I'm so worn out from everything that I've been doing that that's why my training isn't going as well. You just can't know that unless you add one thing at a time and make these changes very slowly over time. Okay? We'll get more into that in the next part. Uh, but for now, I hope this was helpful. If you have questions, leave them below. And as always, the write-up will be available on Barband. So if you didn't catch something or you just prefer reading rather than listening, uh, check out the links in the description below.